Hare Krishna, Govind Prabhu. Thank you very much for joining today. For the long podcast. Thank you for a long time. Yes, ma'am. So, Prabhu, I, I'm in Canada, you are in India. And I thank you that we could make out the time today. So, I thought of talking on this movie, the Kerala story. And especially uh, from this, when we talk about this, we could go into various angles. But I thought that it's easy to blame, but you know, what is in our control and what can we take responsibility for? So I thought of four different things. You know, one is broadly, so I'll use this tablet for writing and drawing things. So I thought we could take responsibility as, you know, as youth, as say people who are Hindu youth followers. Then we have our leaders, we have parents, and then we have the media. Mm. No, we can always say that the media is biased. We can say all that, but what can we do about it? And then within that, maybe we could talk some theological concepts like what does God's protection mean? How to understand it? What it means and what it does not mean. Mm. So <clears throat> any thoughts you would like to start with? Yes, when I went to see the movie, I came out halfway through. Not because what I saw the aggression by the other party, but by the stupidity of our own people. No? You know, mm. how can someone, you don't need to be a practicing person to refute the logic of the opposite person. Theology is a different thing and, and common sense is a different thing. Even from the common sense perspective, you could easily overcome the aggressive, you know, unreasonable logic they were presenting. So that was basically very painful for me. How can and it is not simply a movie, this kind of stupidity we see amongst our own people asking questions which are not reasonable and logical. I call it as arrogance of ignorance and well falling for stupidity. Mm. Huh? So, now this is a very provocative point where you're making Rui, that it's <laughs> the questions themselves I thought of two things yeah those are questions which could come in anyone's minds but to think that that nobody has ever asked these questions before and that there are no answers available and to just get persuaded by that I mean I would say the questions themselves are not wrong but is it that millions and billions of people who have followed the tradition before have been so foolish that they never had these questions and they never had any answers to those questions. So I would say that is, in one sense, a greater tragedy that there's almost like a the arrogance, not that and I am ignorant, but arrogance also, it's almost like that everyone following this is just as ignorant and I don't want to be in a part of this. Yes. So that inquiring to find out, that is, I think, a, not inquiring to find out, is is a big problem and uh, one thought i had about this is that many people don't even know where to find answers mm. isn't it that that the idea that now there are there are nowadays in social media and youtube there are so many teachers so many people who speak on the vedic tradition but the idea that philosophical answers can be found out even as you said philosophical not even common sense answers can be found out that it seems that itself is not something that people think about. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that shows, actually that shows that a simple logic again, just because you lose an argument, losing an argument is not establishing it as a truth. Truth is different from winning or losing the argument. They are not inclusive most of the time. Yes. No, you know, this is a, again, this is such a key point that while 
it's it's almost like logic and when you are making an argument it depends not so much on who has the truth but logic is like an argument so sorry logic is like a sword or a gun or a you can say a weapon just because somebody has the gun doesn't mean that they they and they win they can fight better with the gun or a sword does not necessarily mean that uh, they are on the side of the right side yes if the other person doesn't know how to use any weapon at all doesn't know how to use sword so even a person who is violent and evil can win so logic alone does not determine the truth yes yeah. true yeah that's what the, that again that is not even logic it's an argument you know argumentation okay. just like how do you differentiate like between logic and argument logic nyaya 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 has a foundational principle of sanatan dharma nyaya is basically judicious like what is her logic the logic was ki your god is not protecting but if you follow my kind of dress my god then he will protect you basically the question can be raised the entire world whether it is a christian world whether it is a islamic world whether it is a so called hindu secular world suffering is the foundational principle of life right mm. and secondly wherever there are no good governance like for example pakistan right pakistan doesn't have a good governance it is known fact here their own television where their ladies are making a big issue about how their own children get abused by their own relatives right and then also it is known fact that people remove the dead body from the burial and try to abuse the dead body also so the question can be raised you know why then your god is causing this no this is not god it is a wrong system you know mm-hmm. broken social system is responsible so for this you don't even need to have deep understanding of your religion about suffering you need to have some social sensitivity and political alertness which was again that movie for me is not simply a story it mm-hmm. is basically representation of a stupidity of a majority community in regards to interacting and talking to people mm-hmm. in every mm-hmm. aspect of life like other day i was talking to one uh, very responsible householder he so said sorry yeah, yeah. okay i just made a couple of points mm-hmm. so what you are doing is when we are talking about suffering there could be probably two causes there could be a divine cause and there could be a human cause mm. the human cause is in terms of the system of administration broadly mm. so if the divine cause were the always the protector then what you are saying is that the human then why is there suffering where that divine is already present so in general we could say that when we are looking for the cause of suffering can we say we should look first at the human cause not yes. at the divine cause yeah what is yeah. visible you know what you can fix that can be very easily visible mm. yeah okay so it's visible and then you can say it's fixable yeah so yeah so that way you can say from a material perspective if there is a decent administration and even if the government is agnostic or atheistic there could be other problems but the basic problem of administration will be there yeah and then you can turn that argument around and say that okay these problems are not there who is protecting if there is people don't even accept god yeah so i think the human cause is is important to look at yeah so so your principle is first look for visible then go towards invisible causes invisible yeah hmm and even the invisible reality like in the mahabharat vidura explains this to dhritarashtra when dhritarashtra had lost everything lost all of his sons Hmm. sanjay had told that you are suffering because you are responsible for your own pain vyasa they were told that you are suffering because there was some story behind this but vidura told factual reality the world is designed in such a way 
duality is the foundational principle you know if you win you lose you are young you become old you know if you if you make some profit you will also make some loss he said that is the part and factuality of life so therefore handle this duality oh okay so here there are three different causes and so so it is in one sense once intelligence we have to use to know which cause to focus on yes so here also means vidura what you are saying is that he is not focusing on the higher cause he is telling that because okay the, the suffering was a higher plan then what are you going to do about it you just have to accept it but how, so if we on the other hand if we accept that do and you, we 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 not we if it's a higher plan within we's almost like we are helpless there's nothing we can do yeah but if you consider duality is going to be in the world then maybe we can raise our consciousness about duality yeah mm. so how is this explanation different from sanjay's because his mistake that means the focus is not on duality it's more that you were attached yeah sanjay is sanjay is making you know you you made it you 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 suffer for it vyasdev is finding you know there is always a the will of the daiva supreme but what vidur mm. is doing vidur is making you empowered you know not only is making you empowered he is also telling you this is how this is how the world functions it's a combination of happiness and distress it's a combination of victory and defeat sometime you win sometime you lose so basically they are not separate from each other they are integrated you are listening yeah. hearing from one aspect from vidura one aspect from sanjaya one aspect from vyasadeva we need to integrate all the three it is not that vidura is no, right and vyasadeva yeah, yeah yeah it's almost yeah. like you know you could have one event yeah and then you could put it in different causal framework yes. yeah the same event yeah. it's almost now that i look at this because it are the three principles for existence so one ex one one principle says center on ishwar another on prakriti and one on jiva so the jiva is what is in our control you know it's like the law of karma is there you will suffer that's the yeah. nature that law of nature but now what can you do about it so it's human responsibility okay that's a very it's yeah. now that you are putting it in this way while there is theological sophistication which you go into like this explanations but at another level it's just common sense that uh, normally where do we where do we just jump to a divine cause whenever there is a problem we we look for practical causes right if i have fall down and i have a fracture i don't say okay god will did you know what was there a banana peel underneath or, or what caused me to slip was there water or something like that so yes that's a, so so you so why do you think that uh, people are so lacking in lacking in say uh, ability to think because many of these people in their professional lives they are intelligent it's not that they are really foolish they are well educated they are achievers in their lives so it seems almost as if people are they they use their brains in other areas of life but don't use it in when it comes to the domain of Uh, religion and spirituality any reason for that you feel not only religion and spirituality in regards to relationship with nature relationship with their own people a relationship with the their own self and then at the end of the day relationship with the supreme self you know oh, okay. so these things are not given any importance unfortunately we are good at numbers we are good at technology oh okay you know? but where is that the sensitive reality like like if you see our education system also the education system does not give focus in regards to like if you ask people like like the same one political alertness if they had some political alertness that girl who went to syria and afghanistan who in the world who in the world even a soldier for that matter from america having all the resources to fight on behalf of his country you know does not enthusiastically want to go there 
यानी कि इफ यू डोंट इवन हैव दैट पॉलिटिकल अलर्ट अरे आई I why should I go there when I have got all the resources, all the stability, which is there in my own place? Why would I go there to lose my life? And it is not just their story, you know. It is the it is the it is the overall the international community which has suffered because of that. Why? Because of lack of lack of being alert, no? Mm, so political alertness, can say. Yeah. it's interesting even soldiers who are paid like i am in america when i interact with americans there's a lo- wide spread i was in america so there's a lot of wide spread opinion that america is getting into unnecessary wars and young people are being sent to the battlefields and you know, for many soldiers also it's ethical dilemma that you know we don't believe that america should be involved in the war but it's our job so what should we do so so it's a, it's a good point i, I mean it's very in one sense obvious point is it due to the in- romantic infatuation that this happens you feel or it just people don't think about what they are doing because one of the one of the foundational knowledge of sanatan dharma is basically tantra tarka yukti nyaya panchatantra what is panchatantra you know like shila prabhupada also told the student should be taught panchatantra right he mentioned that yes. somebody cheats you that is their problem if they cheat you second time it's your problem yes what is that no, thing cheat so, me once shame on you cheat me twice shame on me yeah yeah no. okay so it's we are creating a legacy of stupidity Oh, so and you are saying that if the if the books like panchatantra are taught then this legacy of stupidity won't happen yeah immediately you become on that platform see let us discuss this spiritual platform later and we are discussing on a very common sense you know where it's a practical behavior what is required for it to sustain nowadays like i was about to mention like one one responsible businessman was telling he said i will not buy any extra property for my child i will not buy any gold because my son will not know how to go to the municipality also to deal with the land papers he will not know how to deal with the gold his ability is to find a screen a computer screen and there he or she can work on managing the financial you know accounting so, right if you ask if you ask 10 people i'll guarantee you out of out of that 10 seven people will not know how to deal with their financial accounting also so you are saying overall that the practical practical life knowledge is lacking among people because they are so caught in the virtual world yeah they are caught in the virtual world and they are caught extremely isolated world my nuclear family of one child husband and wife my job and then my exclusive temple so you live in a silos you live in an isolation the world around you does not exist at all yes huh? it's it's almost like i have my interest and for what i am interested in i may find information from another corner of the world yeah. but what is of relevance to me might be right around me but i may not care for it at all yeah mm. so is this are you saying that this is a general characteristic of human beings or you could say this is this is somehow this isolationist tendency is a characteristic of say the indian hindu community no no this is this is the general characteristics of everybody because over over exposure to something which is very virtual which is unrealistic has caused everyone go through this he said those who are more radical their people suffer the most very simple 
you know here here the radical islam radical christianity is not the winner you know their own people as i was giving you the example in pakistan or afghanistan their own people when you study the story of women you mm. know it is so painful right it is so painful so it is not about this community or that community it's overall yeah. you know one of the problems with respect to radicalism is that you know we may decide that if we are all the good people we are all the saved people and everybody else is bad everybody else is going to hell yeah. but the problem is that when there are differences among these so called good people then again in among these good people you know this part becomes good and all the others become bad yeah and then so that means fanatics or radicals as you are the word you are using now who is who is in our group who is not in our group that will keep changing and slowly it will become smaller and everybody who does not exactly identify with agree with that that person that power, group in power everybody else will be demonized and destroyed yeah mm -hmm. so therefore isolation isolation what it does whether it is religious isolation or it is a technological isolation or even becoming a fan of a particular team like ipl is going on right so yesterday one particular team lost so they are threatening a person who is responsible make uh, making that team get defeated they are sending a bad message to him on instagram imagine what kind of isolation is this it's a mere it's a mere commercial sports Mm. it's a purely commercial sports there is nothing for you to show that kind of loyalty so isolation gives rise to blind loyalty to the extent where you have to slander everything around you which is not your kind of opinion mm. no you know? here in america also there is antifa and i was in some of the more left wing leaning states and crime is increasing homelessness is increasing so it's american sociologists are also actually wondering why this happens this kind of in one sense when there is isolation people want some sense of belonging yeah and then some group they join and when they join that group they don't really think you know is this group really good what is what is the group is my will my actions be really good when i join this group so then this in one sense sports example can seem a very it's a very routine thing uh, unfortunately and religious example the consequences are extreme but the way you are analyzing the underlying mentality is the same so basically i consider anybody who does not go my way to be bad whether it is my sports team way whether it is my political way whether it is my religious way i was um, it seems in america past there was division based on religion then it is you know race now it's political division almost like 90% of democrats say that we will never marry anyone who will vote for the republican party yeah it's true so it's that basically kind of, yeah that kind of radicalization is there everywhere when it happens in religion then your conviction is so strong somebody said you know being born in a north korea you'll be freed after death but if you're born in a radical family even if your death you will be tormented after death also there is no release after death also what do you mean by that why no release after death means, means because you are driven by faith na because you are driven by faith you know every move of your life is controlled wherever you go according to certain theology you know oh okay you're eternally condemned till the judgment day right so imagine oh, okay. you can so... be freed from north korea's clutches but you are not freed from the clutches of radical opinion even after your death it's a satire sarcastic And it okay, is okay. so real, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it seems that unfortunately, radicalism is increasing across the world. 
somehow that whether it is political radi- uh, radicalism ideological radicalism so would you say this itself is a sign of kaliyuga mm, or is it uh, that what what is the what do you think again we don't want to go into higher causes again yeah let so, us let us focus because because again again because if you study in sanatan dharma again as i said what is sanatan dharma wherever you find the universal principle you know is visible that is sanatan dharma because sanatan dharma is not connected to a particular set of people the word sanatan means eternal dharma means judiciousness you know sustainability so wherever you find that universal sustainability it could be in eskimo it could be in some other part of the world you know that is becoming less and less like imagine in america the some of the liberals are asking left liberal left special left is asking for a segregated hostel for the black people yeah so it's a reverse racism unfortunately yeah their their argument is that we need discrimination present discrimination to end past discrimination hmm. but then where is that going to end it, it is almost it just doesn't work that way yeah okay so you are saying that universal the understanding of universal sustainable principles itself is going down everywhere yeah it is going down everywhere and then specially because see with others you don't fear what will happen in my future life but religion over emphasizes on the concept of suffering beyond this life let us not discuss oh, but it is the reality but imagine for a unevolved mind using the concept of suffering life in the future for your advantage to control them you are not interested in giving them knowledge to empower them to grow you are using that knowledge to control them now to such an extent their present is disturbed they have no clue of the future they become completely wrecked mentally intellectually they are destroyed socially they are broken to pieces in their very home right in the presence of their family they are tormented in every other way Mm. the material world is causing an exclusivity your cricket fan is causing exclusivity your sports star your movie star your movie actress is causing an exclusivity and top up that there is an exclusivity of guruism also right mm. and then no, what to see. speak of exclusivity of god yeah. you know that's what in that movie begins my god will protect you when you go to the mall if you wear mm. this kind of cloth you know i was thinking about this point there was an atheistic thinker who said something that he said that religion alone makes people become suicide bombers because it teaches the dangerous nonsense that life doesn't end with death yes so now that idea itself is not dangerous nonsense i was thinking about this you know we could make like a four quadrant diagram it is belief in after life is one thing but then narrow mindedness or broad mindedness is another thing so if we have belief in after life a person can still be as i think when you are using the word isolated it's also something similar to narrow minded that my group is the only right group so we have no belief in after life so in some ways we could say that this is the most dangerous in belief in after life but narrow mindedness so that will make a person most dangerous yeah so ideally speaking if there is some belief in after life along with that there's broad mindedness then it is good it's true then it so yeah because because see in our uh, lot of uh, uh, so and this goes back to earlier point and even this is a person may not have belief in after life but if that person is somewhat broad minded then that is better and sometimes here in the west we see some debates between atheists and uh, theists 
both are making reasonable arguments you know maybe the atheist is at least they are having a civil debate they are not they are not just trying to say manipulate or indoctrinate or brainwash so in that sense one's uh, like uh, you could say the broad mindedness is having a broad mind may be more important than having the so just call the right belief the right belief yeah. with a with a narrow mind would be bigger trouble in one sense yes very much because because see when you are dealing with the when you are dealing with the supreme self with the wrong understanding has a huge impact on the entire existence of human civilization right like there is this an atheist in america teaches meditation right he mm. wrote a book called as end of faith yes sam okay yes sam yeah. yeah right so at least when he speaks he was speaking to one you know faith follower and after seeing their discussion i said this man he is more of an agnostic yeah rather than a aggressive violent radical atheistic yes so he think... has this sensitivity to say um... how could you as a person of religion hope and are convinced about all the hindus who worship the you know hanuman ji and ganesh will go to hell is it not mental holocaust it's, it's a mental holocaust if you get the chance maybe you would also terminate if they don't convert and there is a past history for it for killing mm. people in the name of god so why should i accept such definition of god so why not practice a pure humanness manavata yeah. here i respect every living being for what they are create a system for people stability and happiness right yeah so huh? and again you, you can say better just simply respect humanity respect people people as human beings that is again a, a broad little bit of a broad mind at least we are seeing the commonality of people yeah you know what you said earlier i mean thinking about this you know, there is exclusivism and then there is extremism while the two are not the same but it's like a slippery slope very easily yeah if i believe that only my path is going to save me and others are going to go to hell so then okay if they are going to go to hell let them suffer lies if they are in hell right now yes. i can help them go to hell i can destroy them right now what's wrong with it yeah. not everybody here will not every exclusive will become a extremist but it's very easy for them to get manipulated or misled and not only get misled to do it very self righteously yeah mm. because when you are superficial and exclusivist you will become an extremist okay you know? but if you are a deeper when you are there is a concept of sanatan goswami also mentions you know ishta dev ishta mantra and guru are guiha are they extremely confident and you know, very confidential to you so when you bring your god you bring your guru bring your mantra in a public space then you will start feeling that my product is superior to your product because see what we see in the world we see competition in the world whether it is school whether it is college whether it is a business whether it is a spiritual organization we keep seeing the competition and imagine when that concept of competition reaches to god how much aggressive one could be mm. you know so you know i am i wonder whether with with the concept of ishta daiva whether exclusivism is also the right word because in one sense we may worship in the concept of ishta i may worship krishna 
but i don't consider that anybody who is worshiping anybody else is going to go to hell yeah. i may not worship that so in that sense i'm not sure whether that is the, the idea of exclusivism as it is present in certain certain traditions is whether it is actually similar to the ishta daiva that because what do you think about this point see there is a nishta for you you will say i will not go anywhere other than my nature my my flavor right that is that exclusivity is allowed that is required for one to be nishta one but at the same time when you are operating in a social world there are all kinds of people around you some believe some don't believe some believe part time some believe different aspect of the supreme ekatvena pratyektvena bahuda vishvato mukam right so therefore mm. exclusivity is an internal reality right and inclusivity is an external reality okay huh? somehow some words have negative connotations but exclusivity and i think the if we just qualify like there are some sanskrit non translatable words so i think ishta yeah. daiva not really nishta like nishta nishta and ishta deva you know ishta is taste my taste you can call it my taste cannot be everybody's taste it doesn't have think, to be i mean yeah. there's nothing wrong in me talking about my taste with others in one sense for those that who is are, your taste you talk you have the all the right to talk your taste but okay. to say that only this taste is the real taste and everything else is a garbage that become violent therefore socrates said he said a truth is a truth a truth is a truth but when a truth is made into a system it becomes violence not even false it become violence can you explain in truth made system yeah when when truth is made into a system it become very violent because you know truth is very very subjective sometime in regards to spirituality i am talking i am talking in regards to my nation's uh, attachment to my nation truth is in regards to oh, my parents okay. truth is against to my guru you know that is oh, a truth okay. but when that truth is made into system and imposed upon everybody then mm. that becomes not false it becomes violence oh very good example is you know, there are some you know, there is patriotism and there is fa- fascism mm. so the key difference this is patriotism is i love my country and that is not a bad thing but then my country should rule over everyone else and every other country should be either subordinate or destroyed yeah that is my country is special and my country is supreme yeah that's a big difference so sometimes especially in europe because they had these two world wars and they attributed both the world wars to love for country you know love for soil love for country that's what hitler's slogan was the nazi slogan was so they start saying that there should be no love for country and that's why they started dissolving that and they had the european union but then suddenly during the covid they discovered national borders and so it seems that that, that love for country itself is not a bad thing but if the love for country leads to narrow mindedness yeah as you said exclusivity or then it becomes a problem so and now so this psychology of making of wanting my group to be special whatever group i belong to that is okay but when that psychology leads us to hate other groups to want to destroy other groups that becomes dangerous and then if that is associated with religion it becomes the most dangerous yeah yeah so pre if you want to yeah if you want to move towards a solution what is it that you feel one thing you talked about is uh, the seeming the lack of intelligence and that arises from no focus on this in education so is widespread education the solution see what happened huh? for this kind of this kind of exclusivity this kind of fascism this kind of radical uh, religious radicalism 
the solution what was given by the liberal people was very unrealistic they were trying to create a homogeneousness you know no borders communism talks about no nation spirituality talks about beyond the body right so the liberal spirituality then the communistic idea and the pure materialistic liberalism started destroying people's identity in the name of going beyond your country or family but that is again another bad idea because mm. you have an identity like i when i talk to some of the children who are born in the country where it is not their roots like indians when they are born in america other places they know they can't identify themselves as an american they are american citizen but not necessarily americans mm. in fact every american what to speak of indians even those who went to america from europe they are not americans they are yeah. american citizens right hmm so there is a confusion about their roots so therefore what sanatan dharma teaches understand your root and expand from there more and more more and more huh? so therefore the the concept of dharma the concept of dharma the universal reality you know it is taught properly systematically before even giving faith to people huh? like what is the foundation of hindu scripture the foundation of hindu scripture is nyaya shastra see right so you are saying that the issue of identity is different from the issue of faith means you are saying before giving faith education so sanatan dharma is not about faith means can you differentiate between the two of them yeah the the foundation of sanatan dharma is the foundation of sanatan dharma is dharma itself and faith is one aspect of dharma right in the bhagavatam third canto it is explained dharma when it marries shraddha it gives rise it gives rise to shubha when dharma marries to shraddha see shraddha faith without dharma will create exclusivity again in the bhagavatam third canto tamo gun shraddha tamo gun bhakti bhagavad gita 17 chapter so for us faith cannot be pure unless it is connected to dharma faith cannot be pure unless it is connected to sattva guna so i cannot you know uh, be stupid to glorify faith unless it is connected to dharma so dharma and nyaya are the foundation right in 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 vedas in vedas i'll just take 30 seconds in vedas it is explained you know like in islam and christianity it is very clear what is nastik atheistic in christianity is one who does not accept bible and jesus very clear mm. in sanatan dharma nastik is not one who does not accept god forget accepting krishna forget not accepting rama forget not accepting lord shiva even the concept of abstract ishwar one who accepts ishwar is not necessarily astic in fact the vedas say one who accept the vedas on accept the vedas and of the shada darshana the two vaisheshika and uh, our uh, you know the kanada philosophy they don't actively accept ishvara but still they fall into the category of astikta only within that one who does not accept ishvara is called as anishvaravadi anirishvaravadi hmm bhagwan ko nahi manta prakriti ko maan leta hai one who accept the prakriti as it is who submits to the laws of prakriti you know veda means one is the shastra veda and there is a loka pramana what is loka pramana loka pramana is not coming from vyasadev 
Lok Praman is not coming from the Rishi. Lok Praman is coming from the ordinary people, which is which is actually has the same principle of the Vedas. They also fall into the category of Vedas. They are all called as Astik. So, see the so, see the definition of Astik that is so broad. You know, sometimes I see even even anybody, whether it is Hare Krishna devotees, whether it is the followers of Shankaracharya, followers of this guru, that guru, there is an element of Christianizing their own faith. You don't accept Krishna, you are an atheist. If you don't accept Lord Shiva, then you are you are you are a demonic. So therefore, going to the foundational principle, it doesn't take much time. Going back to the Vedas, going back to the Vedic Dharmic principle. When you teach that and top up that, you give them, you know, when you top okay, up so that, when you start. If I understand teaching, right, when you say yeah. accept Vedas, so Vedas, are you saying the Vedic teaching is Dharma basically? Yeah. And within Dharma, and Dharma is more like universal principles of living or something like that. Yeah. And within that, you could say one principle is faith. Yeah. Faith in your Ishtadaiva, Ishtadaiva. Yeah. But so whether even if that is not accepted, still that person remains a follower of is considered astic. He's considered astic. Mm. So now when are we using the word Vedas in the in the sense of for accepting particular texts? Because then it will become similar to accepting Quran or no, accepting no, Bible. Therefore, therefore, I said one is Shastra Praman, which is called as Veda, one it is Loka Praman. No Praman okay, doesn't have Vedas. Okay, that's right. Okay, earlier you talked about simple common sense also. Yeah. So Loka, I think in our tradition, Aitiha, Aitiha is also one yeah, of the... Yeah, Aitiha is a Loka Praman, which is Vedas only, you know. Okay. So that is the that also falls under the category of Vedas only. I'm not only talking about book Vedas. There is no such thing mm. as book Vedas, because Vedas are basically Shruti. And Shrutis don't have book. So whatever you are captured as four Vedas is not limited to that. That is Shastra Praman. But there is a, based on that Shastra Praman, there is limitless knowledge, which is as Loka Praman, Aitiya, that is also considered as, you know, uh, coming from the Vedic source only. So they all fall into the category of Astikas only. Okay. Right, the pagan people in South America, the pagans in uh, you know anywhere in the world, they have no clue of any avatars, they have no clue of any Vedas. But when you understand their idea, you say, Wow, it makes so much of sense. Okay, this is amazing because this understanding of Astik. It, it is extremely, extremely inclusive. So, so basically, you can say that dharma is uh, is broadly the wisdom and it of is, And it is, it is not a liberal value. Oh, I am a liberal, therefore, this is Shastra Praman. What, whatever we are discussing here about Vedas, who is Nastik, who is not Nastik, it is not. I am saying, when you study Vedas, they will say this. This is how we define who is Nastik and who is not Nastik. So we could say that the idea of inclusivity come, can come from Astikta yeah. and it can come from liberalism. Yeah. And the two are very different. Very, very different. Because liberals destroy your roots and the traditional people destroy your broad-mindedness. Sorry, traditional More, people? The traditional means the conservative who are radicals, oh, okay, okay. conservative who are exclusive, they destroy you know, liberal libertarian principle. And liberal people oh. destroy the conservative principle. But Vedas, when I say Vedas, the Shastra Veda, and also what resembles to the Vedic knowledge, they have the deeper connect between my roots and my universe. They can see their small home in, a, in an African village and at the same time, they can see the larger universe also. Yeah, so... 
So destroy broad. So basically, so you are saying that the solution for all this is to create more awareness of dharma, of the principles of living, and that will foster broad mindedness. Hmm? A true broad mindedness based upon. Otherwise, see, like as you said, how can a political, you know, the the how America is basically, you know, less getting. broken in regards to a political a political ideology if you are a if you are a democrat i will not marry you if you are a if you are a republic i will not marry you right hmm. so you are saying we are close supporting in the yeah. college campuses people do not become friends based upon certain political ideology yes So it's you know the liberals. That's why you're talking about two broad minded. The liberals can be very illiberal in one sense. He very much. So that they claim to be broad minded, but they're not at all broad minded. Not at all. Like there is whole cancel culture and censoring of speech, so much. So like, this is actually yeah yeah. So one one more example. Somebody gave this example. The liberals want gun to be controlled. while having hundreds of security people around them yes liberals want borderless state but having a gated community cameras you know having a guarded community you see it consciously observe this hmm you know like if you go to uh, arbindo ashram in pondicherry it is not a guarded community even though it is very conservative in one sense Hmm. Right, because the so, concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a dharmic principle. You know, I don't. It's it's not about. I'm so proud of being a Hindu. I'm grateful. Right, when the pride comes again, you are undermining. You help them. You know, add the Vedic principle again. The Vedic principle. I'm not saying add Veda as the shastra. the veda as the as the psychology if you add that psychology you know where there is a reformation without compromising in your nishta then they can coexist right okay so the solution if you want say unity in we can say it is a common phrase but it is still a meaningful phrase unity in diversity then basically we can have unity If there is proper education of the principles of dharma, yeah, and then with respect to diversity, we can have shraddha. Diversity can be there, yes. But if there is no foundation of dharma, then the shraddha will actually lead to problems only. You always because it will become tamogun shraddha or it will become rajogun shraddha, and rarely it becomes sattvogun shraddha. What to speak of transcending all these three? Hmm. No. so do you see overall in india or elsewhere some positive changes happening in terms of the rising of consciousness towards this people getting say fed up of fanatical or radical kind of faith yeah there is there is a there is see that the the challenge is people are done with anything which is exclusivity hierarchical and dictatorial one of the reason i'll give simple example during the covid all the control of different organization including the spiritual like organization you know people were able to listen from anywhere to everywhere you know you are sitting in bombay giving talk to somebody in group of canada before covid that was not allowed that would not happen there was a there was a system set up sometime it would suffocating system because knowledge to seek knowledge is the responsibility of the student you know mm. so therefore the student will go around looking for a right kind of teachers but if you stop only no no you cannot you cannot do this a harvard student cannot go to cambridge and learn something but the cambridge is put posting their talks in open platform the harvard student can hear one teacher speaking philosophy in this way another person speaking philosophy a different way so there he has a greater capacity to harmonize between what is learning here 
and is learning from that. So COVID destroyed that in a border. No? Mm. It gave exposure to larger information. So whoever basically tries to create rigidity in and around, people don't want to follow that. But the disadvantage of that is, you know, like the open source, like in in uh, in uh, architect, some uh, very uh, nicely educated architecture engineer he was saying, he said in architects there has to be a balance between space and structure. Imagine he said you have a house in the middle of five thousand acres of land that is not having a space that is nightmare for you you cannot survive there you know and similarly if your structure is like facing your second wall everywhere there are structure without in a space that also suffocates they said there has to be balance between discipline and freedom you know, mm -hmm. the liberal worlds want to destroy all discipline. Mm -hmm. And the conservative world wants to put all the discipline. Mm -hmm. So both are suffocating. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what Sanatan Dharma creates a combination of mm -hmm. Raga, you know, and Nyaya. Mm -hmm. You know, there is Nyaya and there is Shraddha. So how are you connecting our freedom and discipline? Are you connecting Nyaya and Shraddha or are you giving that as an example? No, that is that is uh, Nyaya and Shraddha. If you see Nyaya is driven by certain logical system and Shraddha is driven by emotions. Na? Without Nyaya, Shraddha is very, it's very, you know, very imposing. Like if I take 10 people oh, okay. like that movie in the Kerala movie, where repeatedly you're bombarded with certain Shraddha without any Nyaya, you fell for it. Again, it is not them. Immediately those girls fell for it. Oh, yes, I need to wear burqa, then I'll be protected. Right? It doesn't take much time, whether you are highly educated or not. If 10 people are bombarding you from everywhere about Shraddha, you fall for it. Right? But if you only focus Nyaya, only focus Nyaya, then your heart, because Nyaya, one of the core principles of Nyaya is to question and then build. No. Mm. So generally what happens, people with logic and reason, they keep breaking, but they will not again reassemble it. Okay, like you know, you have analysis and then we need to have synthesis. Yeah. But if you break down, you don't build it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very nice point. Eh? Mm -hmm. So break and then build. That should be. But otherwise, it can be only break. Mm -hmm. So the Bhagavatam says that doubt is a sign of intelligence. Yeah. Doubt is one of the characters of intelligence. But doubt is not the only characteristic of intelligence. Yes. You know, if you so only keep doubting. Okay. Imagine in the Bhagavatam that same where you are quoting from, doubt is one aspect of intelligence but but gratitude another aspect of intelligence how different they two are mm. you know kritajnata is full of emotion driven you know okay. and doubt is full of you know intellect driven but they are reconciled within the one principle of buddhi So, so now, are you connecting Nyaya with Dharma? No, because earlier we were, we were contrasting Shraddha and Dharma. So now you are contrasting Nyaya and Dharma. So through Nyaya, Dharma is to be understood. Is that no, what Nyaya and Shraddha, I said. Nyaya and Shraddha, because Nyaya, no, earlier, Dharma... No, earlier, no, earlier we were contrasting Dharma and Shraddha. Yes. Now we are contrasting Nyaya and Shraddha. So yes. what is the relationship between Nyaya and Shraddha? So Nyaya and Dharma, by Nyaya, Dharma will be known. So, Nyaya is basically a tool to understand Dharma. Nyaya is a tool to understand Satya. Nyaya is a tool to understand, you know, Rita. Okay. So, once you understand this principle, then same thing you will extend. Oh, 
दिस थिंग कैन बी कन्सिव थ्रू प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण वॉट डज न्याय टेल यू न्याय टेल्स यू ओके दिस कैन बी कन्सिव थ्रू प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण दिस कैन बी कन्सिव थ्रू अनुमान प्रमाण नाउ इट इज बियॉन्ड न्याय देर फॉर आई हैव टू कन्सिव दिस थ्रू प्युअरली श्रद्धा बियॉन्ड द सेंसेस सो युअर श्रद्धा ऑल्सो हेज टू बी बॉर्न फ्रॉम न्याय ओनली but it goes beyond naya when it comes to shraddha but you know where to put that kind of shraddha mm. so sometimes you know the idea of shabda praman we presented in a way as if pratyaksha anuman are useless but that there is a jurisdiction where pratyaksha anuman yeah. don't work but that doesn't mean they don't work anywhere anything which is this is one of the principle of nyaya shastra only whatever is conceivable through senses You have to have pratyaksha pramana. Just because you are my leader, you tell me, "Yeah, you invest money here." I am. I am telling you because I am your leader. No, you give me the statistics because the financial uh, accountability does not require shraddha. It requires mathematical precision, born out of nyaya. All mundane science requires pratyaksha praman. The more subtler mundane science or upavedas requires anuman and pratyaksha, right? Mm. And then much more greater, deeper pratyaksha and anuman will lead to shabda praman. Oh, this is we are talking about atma. We are talking about relationship of atma with paramatma. we are talking about our sadhana our spiritual practices for this i need to imply or apply the you know shabda pramana which is beyond the senses but that is also coming from the understanding of pratyaksha and pramana only not just faith so when we say somebody is following vedas that includes all these three pramanas all the three vedas is not only shabda pramana all the three are included All That's the three really... are all three are integrated. Integrated in the sense that the three become harmonized, something like that. Yeah, three becomes harmonized. You will apply when which one to where. Oh, so it's more like you are integrated in the sense that they have their own domain. Yes. Okay. So when we could say when faith becomes radical or fanatical, we are saying then it's like. shabda is applied everywhere okay. then you cannot even know whether it is shabda because you don't subject it to any logical scrutiny or empirical validation yeah. at all it's just like again just like if those girls knew and they would have said are my dear friend you are talking about we will be protected because i wear a different set of clothes but you know what in some other part of the world they are wearing the same set of clothes but they are going through all these abuse what do you think about that They said, "Hey, shut up! You cannot ask that question. You cannot question my religion. That is how people are controlled by shraddha and basically beaten for raising right kind of pratyaksha pramana question. You know, when when a when a spiritual teacher, a counselor, or a mentor, or whatever it is, is telling you about chanting the names of God, there you." may ask few questions but it is a practice unless you put your shraddha in practice you will never experience but that same person who taught you how to chant particular mantra he tells you are you give me 10000 dollar charity or you give me 20000 dollar loan so it is a responsibility to question you know why should i give you loan for what you want that loan or you don't believe me i give you the holy name i give you spirituality so there that man is using the spiritual investment and questioning that person questioning his credibility in regards to the power of handling money hmm i say you prove man you can you have the capacity to pay me back 20000 dollars why should i give you is it an investment is it a business investment is it a help for some time you know if he has never handled even 2000 dollar just because is my superior is asking me money i should not be giving that is not aparad 
So yeah. nyaya basically keeps your respect for what that person is giving you spirituality, and nyaya keeps you alert for something what he doesn't know. You are able to distinguish between the two. You will not fall for, you know, fall for this for the sake of this one. You don't fall for logic. Fall from logic because of your faith. So Nyaya and Shraddha are used appropriately at the right place, right time, without feeling any kind of inhibition or any kind of, you know, guilt. Mm -hmm. I, I rejected. No, very clear. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they basically, uh, this point of, uh, if you could say education in the principle of dharma, education in the principle of logic, that is provided then people can become more individually responsible for their own decisions and not get so influenced. Yeah. So it seems overall, the... so it seems overall encouraging people to take individual responsibility and, and they can intelligently decide you know, which groups they want to belong to and how they want to belong that, to that group. Yes. Yeah. That is the way. That is the way ahead. And therefore the word karma you know, has been slow slandered. Even those who are preachers or teachers of spirituality are so conscious of not using the word karma. We have slandered karma, but karma is the word which is so empowering. So, so you are connecting this with what exactly? The point of karma being slandered? And karma, I'm, I'm connecting this word with Taking responsibility. Okay. To understand those concept. Otherwise, yeah, people... Under, understand the concept the because if somebody cheats you, you know, as we discussed, if somebody cheats you, then shame on him. But if he cheats second time, then it is shame on you. So the karma philosophy goes deeper. It says, if I give you wrong knowledge, wrong information, I am responsible 100% for giving that wrong knowledge. But doesn't stop there. You are responsible 100% for taking that wrong knowledge. You cannot only look for sympathy for only, you know, given bad advice. Are you took that bad advice. It's a mechanistic process. Again, there is nobody involved in here. I gave you the fire. I am responsible for giving you wrong thing. But you took that fire in your hand and you have burnt your hand. You know? So this people have to understand karma is does not make anybody victim. But rather karma makes everybody empowered. Are don't take it. You know? Don't take that. Mm. Karma is nothing about sin or piety. Let us not keep like that. No, no, it's your karma only. No, it is a responsibility. Take respon. It doesn't mean take responsibility means other parties free from their bad behavior. They are hundred percent responsible. Yes. I have to ultimately I have to fix my own life. If somebody has abused me. They should be given death penalty. Understood. You know, their abuse will has to be given them penalty. But giving them 100% penalty or punishment does not change your life. You can feel happy that they are punished. But does it change your life from negative to do something tangible? Therefore, when we say karma, taking responsibility, like our original, this thing is, who is responsible? Whether this faith, point. that <laughs> faith is responsible. I am responsible for my growth. I will become alert. I will become assertive. I will not be defensive, but I will not be offensive. I don't want to be like them because it doesn't, in my dharma, doesn't allow me to be violent. I don't want to be an exclusivist. You know? So, you're, so what you're saying is that with respect to the example of the abused, yes, somebody may have misled, 
and you may want to punish them but like people who make revenge the purpose of their life even if they get succeed in making revenge but then they know what what to do next after that yeah yeah so you have to have some positive meaning in your life yeah. and take responsibility justice okay, has to come i'm not saying they should suffer for their karma 100% justice has to be given krishna gave justice to draupadi yes but he also okay. helped draupadi to empower herself death of my mm. enemy is not necessarily prosperity of my life i am still zero only yes after so, the after the entire kaura out of the destruction of kauravas it is explained it took 60 years almost to re establish proper prosperous stable uh, in hastinapur mm. Mm. so in today's world we could demonize or we could criticize we could uh, we could take action against uh, say people who are converting and manipulating but just that is not enough unless we take the responsibility about understand our own tradition somebody else yeah. will come and mislead yeah and even if nobody misleads still we are not having the wisdom that is available yeah. uh, for growth for our own growth and for to benefit from the legacy that we have your own group can cheat you your own group can exploit you you don't need an outsider to be exploited so you don't have a choice of not taking responsibility of your life you cannot give your life in the hands of this group or that group that group is somebody else's group but this is my group i don't like my group therefore i am going to that group there also will be abused and if you are not intelligent if you are not logical if you are not you know taking empowering yourself this group will also will abuse you hmm I think this is such an empowering message because I've seen sometimes people when they hear about this, either they get angry, like you're saying, aggressive, and they become almost hateful, or otherwise they become passive. You know that is just the way of the world. What can you do about it? Better not think about it only. But this, I mean, this incidents like this can become impetuses for us to take responsibility for our own decision making, for our own for. and this for eva- for evaluating and enhancing our own world view yeah. and that is what will help us create a better life and maybe help others we can help others also to create a better life that is how the legacy legacy increases you know now it is a legacy of stupidity you know but if you make a reverse then it become legacy of vedas veda means knowledge to know you know to be mm. conscious to be aware to be contributing to oneself and to others so this battle of dharma and adharma the battle of sura and asura is a battle of not this party and that party no therefore the ultimate focus okay. goes it to my own self i need to therefore mukti is never a mukti is never a community centric mukti is an individual centric i become liberated but that doesn't mean i get mukta by turning away from the community it is yeah. we we in one sense we serve the community but it is individual responsibility yes yes for you so this has been an amazing discussion um uh, this is a lot of valid points i'll we went in many directions i'll try to summarize and then if you want to add a couple of points is there anything you wanted to add speak which which you are not spoken or should i try to summarize yeah, that's what i said i always say the quote of ramdas swami has been a guiding principle in regards to you know spiritual absorption social sensitivity and political alertness that means artha shastra is part of politics you know you don't have to be politician but you have to be having some artha artha shastra all right and then uh, social sensitivity is about basically connected to your uh, dharma you know dharma basically helps you understand helps you understand others and spiritual absorption which is a moksha shastra right so this okay. three this this triangle which is very important for everyone to go grow in a common sense 
to the uncommon reality of the transcendence you know like there is a saying in kannada illige salladavaru allige sallaru means if you are not of this world properly then you can't be of that world properly yeah if you are dysfunctional here you cannot suddenly become functional by becoming the spiritualist not possible right. okay so so you are saying this is a is a marathi shloka by ramdas swami is three things yeah about i, okay. I, I don't have that exact one here but that is the okay, so so now sometimes some people would say spiritual absorption requires that you become socially and politically isolated but that would be what will shraddha that will become radical yeah so so we in one sense we have time for our spirituality that time we focus completely on it yeah. but during other times so political alertness means we understand that people can be manipulative and we don't want to become political we don't in the sense of being manipulative but we can't be naive we have to be aware of how people function how groups function and then that is is that what you mean by political alert yeah political alert means nobody will cheat you okay no nobody will take you for granted and social sensitivity means you will not be self absorbed you will see your society around you extend yourself you know you you contribute to the growth of other people okay so social sensitivity is something like the gita talks about loka sangraha loka sangraha yeah like so social contribution okay yeah like our so lord chaitanya one... had this three kind of consciousness samadhi you know then external and then samadhi and uh, and external in between two consciousness no these are all very vedic concept you just not oh lord chaitanya was like this no this is how a person samadhist person while in his own world he is totally unaware of what's happening but when he is in the outside world he is you know very you know like how lord chaitanya in his absorption also he was putting that chadar to shankar pandit in the middle of the night that is social sensitivity mm-hmm. while being spiritually absorbed beautiful this is even so this is not even for somebody this is even for somebody who is a sanyasi has renounced the world and what to speak of people who are functioning in the world yeah Okay. Spiritual absorption is only allowed to Sukadev Goswami because he doesn't take anything from anybody. If you buy mm-hmm. one set of clothes from any factory, you are obliged to be functioning in this world. Yes. So when you say spiritual absorption means that absorption is completely disconnected from the world. Disconnected from mm-hmm. the world. You can't say I'm spiritually absorbed while using all the resources, you know, which cause so much of exploitation, so much of. contribution so much of intelligence involved and you say no i have nothing to do with this that's again you know a radical spiritual absorption you may not be harming others but you're not you're being very selfish it is self absorbed okay so spiritual absorption it should not become like self obsession or self absorption yeah. i care only for myself not for others yeah yeah that's selfishness thank you bhuji so let me try to summarize We had a, or a big journey. So we started by talking about how, when this happens, we basically it was the stupidity of people that they could not defend themselves, and then we looked at the causes of this to of the stupidity because there is no logic over there, no use of logic, and there is no emphasis on higher principles in today's world, higher teachings. that is not emphasized hmm or neglected in education but then then we discussed elaborately about about shraddha and dharma that how shraddha is more personal and dharma is more universal and both are required but when both are together that leads to shubha and if it's only one then that leads to radicalism and we discuss that radicalism or extremism it can harm people every it can occur in various areas it can occur in politics it can occur in spo- uh, sports it can occur in religion but especially when it occurs in religion because it comes with like strong strong faith you can say uh, 
or uh, it it can it can lead to really very bad extremism mm. so when you talk about dharma it is more about we discuss that how you know we need to be broad minded and not just believers that how belief in next life um if that is without broad mindedness that can lead to even greater intolerance so then we did, i think we discussed about several other things but i mean this is a quick just a quick summary then we discussed about the solution would be sanatan dharma that the the conception of astik is so broadly inclusive that astik is based not on shraddha is one part of it but uh, it is not just shraddha it is based on universal principles of living lok praman is also included and from that perspective if even people who are say south americans who are living according to, in harmony with nature they may be called pagans but they they are also having some principles of sanatan dharma and this we consider in contrast with say the idea of idea of non believers versus astics nastics so this was very different so so one way we then we discuss was about nyaya so by nyaya we understand uh, how to live in this world and nyaya in this we understand that all the sorry all three we can say that pratyaksha anuman and shabda they all have their domain and all these are to be used appropriately at various places so generally for visible phenomena we use our senses to discern things and for that which is beyond the senses then we use shabda as a source so but if just simple just faith alone is used for everything then that will lead to fanaticism and then lastly we discussed about how inclusive we want to be inclusive but more in the vedic way which is based on wisdom and not in the liberal way which actually destroys roots so when we go to our roots and then we expand from those roots and understanding our identity then that will make us authentically liberal where we talk about or authentically inclusive not liberal where there's three things that is the spiritual absorption social sensitivity and then social sensitivity means we are contributing to society and then we are also politically alert so that we don't let ourselves get cheated so one of the key teachings of Ved- vedic principle you talk about about karma i think that is a good point karma and a good, a good concluding point that take responsibility don't just blame those who cheated you that yes they should be punished but take responsibility for your decisions the cheaters are to be blamed cheaters are to be punishable because they cheated but they they che- they, they exploited others but the cheated have to also become experts so that they don't become cheated and then we take responsibility then we can do good for ourselves and some good for the world also that's how there can be actual shubha any points that you want to add or anything i missed out through so then again no worry nobody needs to give kerala story of this sort but can go to see guru ayar of pine kerala <laughs> that's a good point you know when we talk about this sometimes the take home people take is that we should go and watch the movie but that's not the take home <laughs> yes we thank you very much for your thank time you, my pleasure hare krishna very stimulating discussion very a lot of wisdom you shared hare krishna yes.